Hello out there. Hope everyone is well today. Hi, my name is Selma Edker, and this is me right here. This is Selma Edker. I'm 68 years old, married to Norman Edker. We are Protestant Christian missionaries, and we live in St. Charles, Missouri, in the United States. <clears throat> My husband Norman is on Periscope every morning at 9 o'clock our time. And uh, that is 0900 military time. We say that we are Protestant Christian missionaries because we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. And this is what I'm talking about. It was translated into English. Uh, around 1500 AD. Hello there, welcome. I was just saying that this is me, a Mrs. Selma Edker, married to Norman Edker. We're Protestant Christian missionaries in the United States, and the reason we say we're Protestant missionaries is because we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. Is the only divinely inspired Word of God to man. There's many other Bibles. Well, hello there. Welcome. Love the fact that you have logged on, and I hope that you will have time to stay and listen for a while. I'm going to be talking about, no, no, I'm not Muslim. I am a Christian, and... Well, hello, Morocco. Welcome, everyone. This is me for those who have maybe who didn't see it yet. Hi there. I'm Mrs. Selma Edker, married to Norman. We are Protestant Christian missionaries in St. Charles, Missouri, in the United States. And the reason we come on Periscope is to share with the world about the love of God and Jesus being the only way of salvation. So, I was just saying, the Protestant Christian Bible is the only truly inspired word of God to man. Hello, welcome. We, um, let's see, I'm going to show you again. The reason I'm showing it this time is at the top it says questions. That is my Periscope title. Hello there, welcome. And so as I talk, hello, as I talk about the Bible and about Jesus, <clears throat> I invite you to ask questions. Uh, hello, welcome to ask questions or make comments. Um, you're Welcome to ask me questions. What it's like to be a missionary wife. Uh, Norman and I have just been married for three years, and uh, it's it's wonderful. Hello, welcome. And uh, you know, if you have questions about the Bible or or anything related to that, um, I'd be happy to chat with you. That's the reason that I'm here. Hello, welcome everyone. Um. To start with this morning, hi, thank you, thank you, greetings to everyone out there. Yesterday uh, when I was on, someone asked, did ask me a question what it was like to be a missionary wife, and what I said in response was all true, hi, welcome. I said that um, it's wonderful uh, being married to Norman um, because, first of all, we love each other very much, but then together we get to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hi, welcome. Together we are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world, and, and uh, it's exciting, and uh, we're very grateful that God brought us together. But I was thinking about that yesterday afternoon, about what I'd said, and it was all true, 
But I feel like I need to expand on that answer. Hi, welcome. Okay. All right. I'd be glad to hear your question. While I'm waiting for the question, for those who maybe haven't seen it yet, this is me, Mrs. Selma Etker. I'm married to Norman. We're in Missouri in the United States. And we love Jesus, and that's the reason that we come on Periscope to talk with the world about Jesus being the only way of salvation. So, um, in, let's see. Oh, okay. That's a fair question. Uh, Norman and I, um, we're both single, obviously. Um, yes, yes, very much so. We, I had been single for 15 years. Norman had been single for about 12 years. Um, and neither one of us knew if we would ever be married again. Hi, welcome. But I had said to God during those years, actually for a long time, I didn't have any desire to be married again, but then, hi, welcome. After several years, I said to the Lord, if you do have a husband for me, I want him to be a man who loves God more than anything else in the world. Hi, welcome. And um, I was not seeking, I wasn't looking for a man, but I knew that was, that I did not to marry anyone that didn't put God first in his life. And that was certainly true for Norman also. He wanted a wife who put God first. Hi, welcome. And so we met at a church he came to visit the church where I was, and and I went and greeted him. We would greet everyone who come in as a visitor. And and so then he asked me if I'd like to go out for coffee um, to get acquainted. And and um, so we when we first had that meeting, neither one of us thought that the other one might possibly be a marriage partner. Hi, welcome. Uh, we didn't feel any any kind of in, romantic interest in the beginning, but then it didn't take long. Um, it was only a few weeks of conversations and emails, and uh, then we began to realize that maybe, maybe God did have a plan for us to be together and... Um, and it wasn't too long until we realized that we were in love. Hi, welcome. And the reason, I can say one reason that we both knew that it was God who brought us together. Hi, welcome. Was that in our personalities, we are totally opposites. In many ways, we are very, very different. Hi, Belarus. Welcome. So glad to have you. Um, someone asked me uh, a few minutes ago, how did uh, how does God bring people together? So I was explaining how Norman and I met. We've just been married three years now. Just celebrated our third anniversary. Okay, good for you. Good for you. Uh, yes, my, uh, my marriage ended badly. My husband, my former husband was unfaithful to me. Um, I had never wanted to be divorced, but that's the way it ended up. And um, Okay, uh, you're saying you won't be coming to the United States? Hi, welcome. From Belarus. Okay. Well, I pray that, uh, 
you know, God's will be done in your life so far as, as um, a new marriage partner. You're welcome. Because that's the only way that it can work. When you love Jesus, you do need to be equally yoked together. And uh, so Norman and I just praise God for what he's done in our lives. And so, you know, especially, hi, well, oh, hi, Miguel. Um, especially as being older. Good morning, Miguel. Glad, Miguel, you just really bless us that you were interested enough in Jesus and our ministry that you want to join us every day. So uh, what I was getting ready to say with Norman and I being older, he's 70 and I'm 68. Okay, Miguel. Uh, no, it wasn't in a dream. Um, it was just, in fact, like I say at the beginning, neither one of us thought the other one was going to be a special person. Um, because we were so different from one another. But there was something in me, I remember saying to myself, I don't want to give up on this uh, possible relationship until I know for certain if it's from God. Because I, I really didn't think so in the beginning and neither did he. But, um, God just put it in our hearts. In fact, I'll tell you, Norman has told this to many people, so I'll share with you what he likes to tell about our relationship. After a few weeks, I had uh, went down to visit my mom. She lived about 100 miles from us. And, hi, welcome. And so I was gone for four or five days, I think, and we didn't uh, have any communication until I came back and we were emailing each other at that time. Hi, welcome everyone. And while I was gone to my mom's, I realized that I was thinking about Norman a whole lot. And when I got home, I sent him an email and I said, when I was thinking about you, okay, the theme of today, so far, Miguel, um, is, seems to be about Norman and I's relationship and about God bringing people together. Um, so I emailed Norman when I got home from my mom's and I told him that while I was gone, I was thinking about him and I trembled on the inside. And that's what touched his heart, and we both knew then that there was definitely something going on. And uh, so that was, then it was just a very short time we realized that we were in love. Oh, thank you for your comments. It, it was amazing to us, too. It was unexpected and, uh, you know, just really exciting. And... I started to say, too, as being older, you know, the older you get, it seems like the more set you get in your ways. You know, you've been, you know, you just have certain ways you do things, certain ways you think. Hi, welcome. And so we did have to make a lot of adjustments in our marriage, uh, you know, because of, hi, welcome. Just because of our age and because of past experiences. So we had to work through some things, but God has greatly blessed us. And uh, we are just, the longer we're together, the happier we are. Hi, I am great. How are you? And welcome. Where, where are you, if I may ask? Thank you for those hearts. Hello there. Welcome. For those of you who are just joining in, this is me. I'm Mrs. Selma Etker. 
68 years old, married to Norman, and we live in the United States in, in Missouri. So, um, Miguel, going back to your question. Oh, hi, Russia. Welcome. Um, hello. Welcome, everyone. I'm Mrs. Selma Edker. Thank you for coming on. I hope you can stay for a while. I'm married to Norman. We're Protestant Christian missionaries in the United States. We're in the United States, just about in the center of the country. How did I answer the call of God on my life? Okay, I appreciate your questions. Um, let me start by saying this. I have not always been a Christian. I was... Uh, as a child, I was taken to a church that was, I later found out, was a false religion. It was, it's actually considered a cult. And I never liked going there, even as a child. And so then when I was grown, I didn't go to church for many years. I didn't want to have anything to do with church because that was a negative experience. So I was somewhere around 40, I don't remember exactly, when I first began to want to go to church and to read the Bible. And even after that, um, I never heard in any of the churches that Jesus was the way of salvation and that a person has to be spiritually born again to go to heaven. Hi there, welcome everyone. So I was 50 years old when I became a Christian, being spiritually born again, and became a follower of Jesus. So um, I, at that time, once I got saved, uh, we live 55-0, Miguel. We live in the United States. Um, okay, let me see. If you give me... Okay, hold on just a second. I'll be right back. I have a, a picture to show you. Okay. Here's our little map for the person that asked where I live. This is a map of the United States. Thanks, Miguel. This is a map of the United States, and we live in Missouri. It's um, almost in the center, not quite. If perhaps you might have heard of the city of St. Louis, it's one of the major cities in the United States, we live close to St. Louis. Um, let's see. Someone had, uh, was, had asked me another question, and I don't remember what it was. But um, at the beginning, I was starting to tell, oh, that would be great if you could come to the United States. Um, yesterday, hello there, welcome. Yesterday someone had asked me what it's like to be a missionary wife. And, um, oh, I know. Okay, I'm going to back up. That person had just asked me about how I answered the call of God on my life. And I was in the middle of that. So, I was 50 years old when I became a Christian, spiritually born again. And so, from that time on, I began telling other people I began telling other people about Jesus. Um, co-workers, neighbors, people Anyone that I felt God wanted me to talk to, if they would listen, I would tell them 
about Jesus being the only way of salvation. So I have done that from the time that I became a Christian. And I welcome. But I also felt that, and I was active in church too. Um, I taught Sunday school and different things. But I felt for a long time there was something more that God wanted me to do. And I and I prayed, I earnestly prayed, God, tell me what it is you would have me do. And then, finally, I found out what it was. And that was to become a missionary's wife in marrying Norman. And in doing that, then, I have, with him, been able to talk to the world about Jesus, both through Periscope, and also on our website, we have, okay, this is our website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. That's all one word. And so on our website, we have hundreds of articles. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, let me, I'll show you. Be right back. Okay, let me see. All right, I don't know if you can see this. Well, the top one, like I say, is how to become a Christian today.com. Or you can Google Norman Edgar. And also, okay, so just ignore the top row. But you can see normanetker.com and also mongnews.org at the bottom. Any of those will get you to our website. Also, uh, we have many videos on YouTube. You could just uh, search for Norman Etker. We have many videos on there. Um, telling about Jesus, about the way of salvation. On our website, uh, Norman has much information about the Bibles. Uh, we have information on there about our lives, about our marriage, just all kinds of things. So I really appreciate you asking. And hello there, welcome. Um, so, going back to something else I wanted to share, you're welcome. Um, in talking about what it's like to be a missionary wife, as I've said, it's, it's wonderful, um, it's exciting, it's, it's a blessing, but there's also, um, just in being missionaries, it's not all great because being followers of Jesus, everyone doesn't like you or care about you. Jesus said, hi, welcome. Jesus said, if the world hates you, he already said, the world will hate you because it hated me first. And that makes perfect sense. Many people hated Jesus when he was here on earth. And the ones who hated him the most were the religious leaders. Because a lot of the people were following Jesus and believing in Jesus. And those religious leaders didn't want Jesus Thank you, Miguel. Those religious leaders didn't uh, want Jesus to replace them. They, they were self-important, and they were the rulers and the synagogues and the temples, and they just um, they didn't want Jesus coming in and taking the people away from following them. So many people hated Jesus. And so Jesus told his followers, 
the world will hate you because it hated me first. And so we know that's true, that when you are a, a, a Christian, a true spiritually born again Christian, Jesus said, not only are there many blessings, but you also will have to suffer as a follower of Jesus. Jesus suffered greatly. Many people wanted to kill him. And here, even on Periscope, Norman and I experience hatred from some people. There are, uh, it says in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament that there would be mockers, people who will mock God, people who will mock or, or make fun of people who believe in God, people who are followers of Jesus. Hi, welcome. So on Periscope, we have, in the beginning, we didn't want to block anyone because we thought if anyone comes on, no matter what they're saying, they would hear about Jesus. Well, hello there, Winnipeg, Canada. Welcome. Let me tell you who I am since you just joined in. This is me. I'm Mrs. Selma Edker. I'm married to Norman. And we are Protestant Christian missionaries in St. Charles, Missouri. And I'm talking about being a follower of Jesus. I was just saying on Periscope, as Christians who are spreading the word of God about Jesus being the only way of salvation, we experience a lot of people coming on who are hateful, who are mockers, who say filthy things to us. And um, in the beginning, we didn't want to block anyone because if they were here, they could hear about God. But finally, there was so many filthy things said, hi, welcome, that we decided to start blocking some of those people. So we know that as Christians, that is, that's part of life as a follower of Jesus. Another thing Jesus said was that the great, your greatest enemies will be those of your own household. And Norman and I, again, have experienced that. We both have, hi, welcome. We both have many family members who don't, love Jesus, don't even want to know about Jesus. Uh, they just want to live their own lives. And um, so therefore, they don't want to be around us because we love Jesus and they don't. Well, hello, Paris. Welcome. Welcome. I am Mrs. Selma Edker. I'm in... The United States in Missouri. I'm 68 years old. I'm married to Norman Edker, who is 70, and we are Protestant Christian missionaries. And I'm here talking about um, being a missionary wife. And uh, I have talked about the the great things about that. I've just been married to Norman for three years, but I felt like, hi, welcome. I felt like I should also um I'm getting if I understand your question correctly Miguel um it's getting much easier for me to be on periscope it was difficult in the beginning because I'm not a real outgoing person, kind of shy and timid, but okay, thank you for your question. Uh, my husband, Norman, discovered Periscope back in January. Yes, my husband discovered 
Periscope in January, and when he saw how it works, he felt like God was telling him that he should use this media. Hi, welcome to talk to the world about Jesus and about prayer. And that's the name of his uh, time is prayer request at 9 a.m. in the morning. And so, yes, it is. And so then after a while of him doing it, I began to feel like I should also participate. Norman is on every morning, and I'm on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings. I work a part-time job, so I'm gone part of the time. So I'm on here three days a week, and uh, like I said in the beginning, it was really difficult because I'm I'm an, more of an introvert. Norman's an extrovert, but um, it is very rewarding, and... Um, it is becoming easier and easier for me to do. Just like most things, once you get some experience in doing it, it, it becomes easier. So we are very grateful that God has made available this outlet to talk to the world about Jesus and the way of salvation. Hi, welcome. So um, our reward, okay, I also wanted to say, we are not um, promoting a church. We're not promoting any church doctrine. We're not trying to build a church. Uh, we aren't selling anything. We're not asking anybody for money. Our only reward in doing this is the joy of the Lord in being obedient to what God wants us to do. And the Bible, the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, says that God's word is like a seed. God's word is like a seed, and we, Norman and I, and everyone who's spiritually born again, who tells others about Jesus, we are seed planters. We are seed planters. Thank you, Miguel. I, I blocked that person. So that means that when we tell others about Jesus, about God, hi, welcome. Their heart, a person's heart is like the soil of the ground. And if a person's heart is soft, and open to listen to the words of God, then those seeds, God's word, the seed, can be planted in that person's heart if they, if they want to listen and learn. So that's all we can do is plant the seeds. And then it's by God's grace that a person can begin to understand. God's grace is his love, his mercy, his power, condescending down to each person. And God knows, hi, welcome. God knows who is sincere and, and who is seeking after him. And so then his grace will help each person to understand about God and about Jesus being the only way of salvation. So if that person then receives that seed, then God waters the seed. Hello, welcome. God waters the seed with his grace. And to be justified with God, justification is being reconciled to God, that is through faith in Jesus Christ. Hi, France. Welcome. Um, there's many, many verses in the Bible about faith. Um, hold on just a second and I'll get a couple.
Okay. You're welcome. Uh, let's see. I have some. Okay. Have some verses here printed out. I was just scanning through them. Uh, one is in the book of 1 John, chapter 5, it says, um, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. And to be born of God means you're spiritually reborn. And it says, This is the victory that overcome, has overcome the world, even our faith. So we can stand against Satan and all the, the evil in the world by our faith in Jesus Christ. And another verse says, For we live by faith and not by sight. Live by faith in Jesus, not what our eyes tell us. And it says, another one says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So we pray, if we pray in faith, we may not see what we are asking for, but as having that faith in God, if we pray according to his will, the Bible says he will answer our prayers, and we need to stand in faith that that is true. And here's another one. This is a good one in Galatians. Hi there, welcome. It says, I have been crucified with Christ. That's when you're spiritually born again. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So when we become spiritually born again, that means that we understand that Jesus died on the cross in our place, Jesus was a God-man. He willingly went to the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind. Jesus endured the agony of the cross. Oh, thank you very much. Jesus loved us so much that he took the penalty for our sins on the cross. God required a blood sacrifice as a penalty for our sins, and Jesus willingly did that. But it took a God-man to endure that wrath of God on the cross. A human, sim a simple human could not have done it. So when we believe by faith, God's grace gives us understanding when we believe in our hearts that what Jesus did atoned for our sins. When we truly want to surrender our heart and life to God and say, God, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. And I will follow you. That is is justification. That means we can be reconciled back to God. Sin cannot enter into God's presence. And before we are spiritually born again, we are sinners by nature. Everyone is born a sinner because of the original sin by Adam and Eve. It was passed on to every person that's born. We cannot enter into God's presence with that sin nature in us, we have to be born again, Jesus said. So when we, hi, welcome. When we turn by faith in Jesus as the sacrifice for our sins and ask God to forgive us. And then the, the, uh, the last step is we also have to agree in our hearts and our minds that, to repent and that means we turn from living our old life to obedience to God, to the words of Jesus. Okay, I'll answer that question in just a moment. 
We have to agree that we will serve God, that we will love him with our whole hearts. And that's by obeying the teachings of Jesus and the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. That is repentance. And when we do that, when we are sincere in our hearts and we are willing to give up control of our lives and surrender to God, then we become spiritually born again. It's a supernatural act of God, and it is by grace. The Bible says we cannot do it ourselves. The Bible says, for it is by grace we have been saved through faith. And it's not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God. We cannot save ourselves. It cannot be done just by a mental agreement. But it has to be a surrender of our heart to God. And then the Holy Spirit comes in and he transforms us. It's a supernatural transformation on the inside. And God changes our hearts and fills us with his love. And then we serve God, we live for him and obey him, and it is a wonderful thing. Hello there, welcome. For those of you who just joined in the last couple of minutes, this is me, I'm Mrs. Selma Edker, Protestant Christian missionary in the United States, and married to Norman. He's been a he has been a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years, and we've been married now for three years. So, uh, your question about how to resist temptation. A person can only do that when they are spiritually born again. And, uh, hi there, welcome everyone. To Satan... Satan is the one who tempts us. Satan is the devil. And his, his work is to destroy people. Hi, welcome. Satan's work is to destroy people. And one of the ways that he does that is through temptations. Hi there, welcome. It's not a sin to be tempted but if we give in to the temptation, that is sin. And we have to resist. The, the temptations comes through our mind, through our thoughts. And so when some of those thoughts come in that we know are not from God, and it's not something that God wants us to do, hi, welcome, then we have to one of the, the best ways is you, you have to know what the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament says. You need to read it and become well versed in the word so that when those temptations come to your mind, you can immediately recall some of the scripture verses that will help you to be strong and not give in to those temptations. Um, the, the Bible says um, to put on, hi there, welcome, to put on the whole armor of God. And that means that we need to really know what God's word says and push those ungodly thoughts out of our mind when they come in. And um, trying to think of, uh, hi there, welcome. Can't think of a particular verse right now, but I do. I can give you an example um, from my personal life. I was uh, before I became a Christian. For whatever reason, I was a a very fearful person, very timid and fearful. I had a hard time uh, dealing with people. Um, I didn't like confrontation. And so there, there are evil spirits. And I think 
that there was a, a spirit of fear that that really gave me a hard time for most of my life. So then after I became a Christian, and hi, welcome. After I became a Christian and, oh, thank you very much. After I became a Christian, then, you know, when you are a follower of Jesus, then Satan is really going to come at you and try to bring you down and discourage you from following Jesus. And so the greatest battle that I had then was with the spirit of fear. Uh, yes, uh, let me just finish uh, this, what I'm saying. And there's a scripture, the main scripture that helped. Oh, that's okay. You don't have to apologize. The, the main scripture that helped me and overcoming the fear when Satan tried to get me with that. Um, and I, I use this verse. I'm looking at that for you. Oh, that's not it. I see. Uh, just one second. I'll find this verse for you. I thought it was, it's in Isaiah. I thought it was chapter 10, but it's not. Um, but whenever the spirit of fear would come at me, and it did often. This is the way I resisted that temptation to give in to fear. And it was this verse, and I would say this to myself in my mind or, or out loud many, many times, and it's in the book of Isaiah in the Protestant Christian Bible. And it's, God says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So that was a very important verse for me in resisting that temptation. Satan would be, tempt me to be fearful about different things. And I would quote that verse, and I would just hold on to that knowledge that God was with me, and that I didn't have to be afraid that he was helping me. So, I think that's a, a pretty good example of, of resisting temptation. And, you know, it depends on what the temptation is. So, when you know the word of God, that is the most important thing. God will help you to resist those temptations. Okay, so um, you had another question. Um, if you stated it, I don't remember. I'm sorry. So I'll wait for you to uh, put that question back up. I really appreciate everyone. Hi, welcome. Where in the Bible Jesus asks us to worship him as a God? Okay, well, Jesus is God. And I can share that with you. I'll have it right here. Okay. Jesus said, this is in the book of John in the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. Um, before I read that, in case there's anyone out there that's come on and don't know who I am and, and why I'm here, this is me, Mrs. Selma Edker, 68 years old. I'm married to Norman Edker. We are Protestant Christian missionaries in the United States. And we're just having some good conversations here about Jesus and about the Bible. And I thank you all for listening. So um, I'm going to read just a few verses here from the book of John uh, to answer your question. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And here, Jesus is talking to one of his disciples. 
And he says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. And Philip, who Jesus is talking to, Philip said unto him, I'm, why did he say, I'm the way? Um, because Jesus is the only way of salvation. The only way to go to heaven is through faith in him. Jesus is God. God is a spiritual substance. Obviously, we can't see him. He is a spirit being and God is a trinity. It's God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. There are three persons in one God. Okay, I understand your question. Okay. Um, so in this, in this same part that I'm reading, Jesus said, Jesus said to Philip, his disciple, He that has seen me has seen the Father. He said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. In me yes yes there's actually three persons and it can be a little difficult to understand with our finite minds we cannot comprehend God except by his grace he helps us to understand and it's by faith that we believe it's God the Father God the Son, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. It's three in one, and yet it's only one God and three persons. So the Bible says that, okay, I understand that question. Many people ask that. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. You're welcome. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. However, in, maybe this will help you, in Genesis, which is the very first book of the Protestant Christian Bible, Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Um, so if you want, want to try to help me understand, and in the meantime, I'm going to read you this. Um, in Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, when God was creating, oh, okay, I see your question. It's just... The word Trinity is not in the Bible, but Trinity means three. Trinity simply means three. And God says that he is God, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when Jesus, after Jesus, um finished his ministry on earth and he was getting ready to ascend back to heaven to be with God the Father, he told his disciples, go and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Those are the words of Jesus. It's three in one. Hi, welcome. And in the beginning in Genesis, Okay, wonderful. Thank you for, for your wanting to listen and learn. Hi there, welcome. In Genesis, when God was creating the world, and then he created man, and he, God said, 
um, he said, let us, you're very welcome. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Hi there, welcome. And I can remember, before I finish that statement, for those who've just joined, this is me. I'm Mrs. Selma Edker, married to Norman. We are Protestant Christian missionaries. And hi, we are on Periscope to share with you about Jesus, about Jesus being the only way of salvation. Hi, welcome. And I can remember many years ago, Jay, okay, Jay, where are you? What, are you in the United States? No, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, thank you very much. Um, going back to this, what God said about let us make man in our image and our likeness. And I can remember many, many years ago, the first time I decided that I wanted to read the Bible and I thought, what does that mean? Who is us? I thought there was only one God. It was very puzzling to me and, and that stayed with me until, hi there, welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Um, so I didn't understand until I became spiritually born again uh, what that meant about when God said, let us. Thank you. God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And he was speaking of the Trinity of God, God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi there. Welcome, everyone. This is me, in case you don't know yet. I'm Mrs. Selma Edker, Protestant Christian missionary married to Norman, and we live in the United States in the state of Missouri. In fact, right here, we're almost in the center of the country. And... We come on Periscope for one reason, and that is to talk about Jesus and the way of salvation. And um, my husband is on every morning at 9 o'clock. That's Central Standard Time in the U.S. And uh, the title of his Periscope time is called O900 Prayer Request. Excuse me. And he will pray with people who asks for prayer, and he also talks to people about how to pray and what prayer is. And, and uh, so we are very excited and, and blessed to be able to talk with people around the world. Oh, okay. I am on Periscope to talk about Jesus being the way of salvation about the Protestant Christian Bible. This, the Protestant Christian Bible, is the only true inspired word of God to man. It was translated into English from the Greek in about 1500 AD, and that is our current English Bible. That is the only Bible, hi, welcome. That is the only Bible we believe in because there are many Bibles that are, have some of added books that are not from God. Some Bibles are just lies of the devil. The Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses have their own Bibles which are false. The Quran is not from God. Uh, the Roman Catholics have added books, which are made-up stories. Uh, yes, there are, that's right, 
we are Protestants. And sad to say, there are millions of people who say they are Christians, who say they are Protestant Christians, but in fact, they are not. Um, you know, that's kind of a, a difficult question in a sense. I, on one level, I don't see anything wrong with it, yes. But I think that when people of different races get married, sometimes that can cause problems for them. Hi, welcome. Uh, simply because there can be difficulties if you have two different cultures together and sometimes one side doesn't really welcome that other culture into their family. Um, it can just cause difficulties. Um, you know, for my part, I don't see anything wrong with it, but just, uh, okay, well, no, that's a... Okay, Miguel, yeah, that's a different question, uh, not having to do with racism. Hi, welcome. But, Miguel, a person who is a true Christian is not going to marry a Muslim. Okay, someone's asking my name. Miguel, I will finish my answer. This is me, Selma Etker. Okay, um, and um, it's the question about mixed marriages. It's a it's a separate question if you're talking about culture and ethnicity and races. It's a separate question if you're talking about mar different religions marrying. So, um, Miguel, going back to your question, a Christian that is a true Christian that is spiritually born again would not marry a Muslim. The Bible says that when you are a follower of Jesus, you should not be unequally yoked together. And that means, it, it can mean different things, but one of the meanings is that a follower of Jesus should only marry another follower of Jesus. So... Yes, Miguel, I am uh, trying to block this person, and it's, for some reason, trying to, okay. Thank you, Miguel. Yes, I've, I've just blocked a couple of people. Um... A person that is spiritually born again needs to be married to another person who is spiritually born again. Yeah, yes, that's right, Miguel. My profession is I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I'm married to Norman, a Protestant Christian missionary. And so our profession is to share the good news of the gospel message about Jesus Christ with the world. And so I was just answering a question to Miguel. Um, he asked if it, about a Muslim and a Christian being married. And Christians need to marry other Christians because as followers of Jesus, we are commissioned to share with the world to other people about Jesus. And if 
a Christian married a Muslim, there would be conflicts there because Muslims do not believe in Jesus as the way of salvation. A Muslim, if a Muslim needs to be spiritually born again, just like everyone else in the world. All false religions are equal. Every person that's a Muslim, a, a Buddhist, a Hindu, uh, thank you. Everyone that belongs to a false religion needs to be spiritually born again in order to go to heaven. And therefore, you can't... Some There are people who say they are Christians, but they are actually not. They think they are a Christian because they may go to a Protestant church. Maybe they read the Bible. Uh, yes, Miguel, but mainly, the main reason is you have a Christian has to be married to another Christian to be joined together with Jesus in faith to be able to serve God. You have to be of like mind to serve God and to tell the world about Jesus. So, Yes, yes. And Miguel, I I am proud of you for spending so much time listening to Norman and I and learning. I know you have a busy life with going to school and Norman says you're learning four languages. I think that's incredible. So we appreciate your following us. Um, when people, people of other religions get married, it may not cause any problems because they're all false religions. But for spiritually born again Christians, All right, thank you. When people are spiritually born again Christians, they have to be married to another spiritually born again Christian in order to serve God. So, <clears throat> oh, okay, this is, hi there, welcome. This is uh, my office and uh, yeah, give me just a minute here to uh, take this tablet. We have we don't have a smartphone, but this is um, a tablet, a Samsung tablet that Norman got, and so this is what we use. Okay, so let me stand up here, and we'll start right here. This on the wall. Here is a it's a wall hanging. Let me see. I'm trying to get it lined up. What it is is a verse out of the Bible. And here we go. It is called the 23rd Psalm. And this is a picture of a shepherd with the sheep. And the reason for this is it starts out, the Lord is my shepherd. Thanks, Miguel. The Lord is my shepherd. And so it's picturing, uh, you know, to, to visualize Jesus being the shepherd of the sheep. The Bible says that the followers of Jesus are like sheep, and he is the good shepherd. Okay, and then here I have, um, it's just a beautiful country picture up there with a Bible verse on it. I grew up in the country, and I... Uh, I just enjoy the country scenes. And then these little um, pictures right here, these are love notes from Norman. They're really special to me, so I frame them and I keep them on the wall. And this is my calendar. And then over here, okay, this 
Thank you, Miguel. This is, our, I'm not very good at, <laughs> at this, so bear with me. This is our wall map here. And on it, you can see those uh, little hearts and stars. I hope you can see them shining. All of those that you can see, all those little shiny things, we have put those on the map showing all the countries where people have come on Periscope and chatted with us. And so we enjoy that a lot of... Um, the elephant, yes. Norman got that elephant in Thailand. Thank you so much. And then um, also we have, okay, this is a window to the backyard. Over here, this is Norman's desk on his side of the room. And that's where he sits when he broadcasts. And uh, up on the wall is some um, cards and love notes that I gave to Norman. And uh, so that's pretty much it. Oh, and right here, let's see. This is, let me show you a couple other things here that are special to me. I'm going to sit back down and... <laughs> okay, this, these are special things, and I'll explain about them. This is a picture of a lighthouse. Here, let me turn this light back. Okay, let's see if you can see that. Yes, that's a picture of a lighthouse. Also, this is my little hurricane lamp. It's an old-fashioned hurricane lamp. Yes, I have a husband, Norman. And then this is also a lighthouse. So, I tell you what, let me, um, I'm going to put, put the tablet back on here. See if I can get it set back on here. And then I'm going to show you how this little lighthouse works. Okay, let's see. All right. So I want to show you this. Uh, my husband's name is Norman. And, okay, here's my lighthouse. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on. Let's see. And you can see the light. And can you hear, you can hear the seagulls and like the ocean roar. Okay. So, oh, you do, you have a lot of lighthouses there. I've always thought they were kind of neat. That's right. We don't need any here. Um, but the reason I have these, and all, all of these things came from a thrift store. So uh, the reason why I have these objects, they're very special to Norman and I, because Jesus said he is the light of the world. And so for his disciples, Jesus, the followers of Jesus, he said after he ascended back to heaven, uh, just a moment, Miguel, after he ascended back to heaven, then he told his followers that they were to be lights in the world. And that means to tell the world about him. And, and so... Oh, yes, and Norman just came in, and uh, he reminded me also, LAM, which is, it stands for light amidst the Hmong, and that was the hill tribe people that he first went to as a missionary. 
And so these things that I just showed you um, are just symbols of being a light to the world. And um, so that's, that's why I have those. It's just a, a reminder and a symbol of what God has called us to do. So um, the person out there that asked me if I'm married and what my husband's name is, um, would you mind telling me your name? And I will show you, um, I will show you Narman's name also. This is our website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. And this is my husband's name down here, Norman Atker. And you can either go on our website or you can Google his name if you want to know more about our ministry, about our lives, about the gospel of Jesus. We have multiple, well, we have over 100 articles on there. We have uh, videos on YouTube talking about Jesus. We're on all the major media sites. Um, we're on Instagram and Twitter and Flickr and VK and Path and every just about everything you can think of. We are on there telling the world about Jesus. So it has been a joy sharing with you today. And I thank you all who have listened. And um, so my time is up. I will be back on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Norman will be back tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. And uh, this, is his, this is his Periscope title. So we love you all. And I'm going to say so long for now. We love you, and I'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. Hi, baby. Hi, honey. You're off? Uh, not yet. I'm working on it. Bye, Miguel.